Donald Trump and Jean-Claude Juncker have agreed to work towards abolishing tariffs between the U.S. and the EU, seemingly avoiding a full-scale trade war. Well, both sides had already slapped tariffs on billions of euros worth of imports after Trump put levies on EU steel and aluminium earlier this year. Well, the surprise announcement came after a two-hour meeting between the two leaders at the White House. Your news is Evelyn Laverick has the report. A new phase in their relationship. U.S. President Donald Trump and EU Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker have pulled back from a transatlantic trade war after talks in Washington. But initially, the omens weren't good for a happy ending. Over the years, the United States has been losing hundreds of billions of dollars with the European Union, and we just want it to be a level playing field. We are close uh, partners, allies, not enemies. We have to work together. A timely reminder, and what a difference. The two sometimes maverick negotiators later emerged pledging to work together towards lowering trade barriers. We agreed today, first of all, to work together towards zero tariffs, zero non-tariff barriers, and zero subsidies on non-auto industrial goods. Thank you. Thank you. We agreed to establish a dialogue on standards. As far as agriculture is concerned, the European Union can import more so soybeans from the US and it will be done. The promises diffuse what had threatened to become an all-out trade war fueled by tariffs set by Trump on European steel and aluminium exports and threats to expand the tariffs to cars. Trump appears to have given ground on that threat, possibly in return for the EU easing problems for US farmers who were searching for fresh markets after China slammed on a 25% duty. Both leaders gave the impression they felt progress had been made, and Donald Trump, far from repeating his opinion that Europe was a foe, tweeted that the transatlantic love affair is back on. Evelyn Laverick, Euronews. Well, while the deal has diffused tensions for now, there was scant detail of when and how agreements will be reached. Well, Brian Carter, our correspondent, joins us now live from Brussels. Brian, it sounds good in general, but we don't really know that much about it, do we? Exactly. At the moment, these are only declarations. We'll have to wait and see whether they materialize into actual commitments uh, on paper. We know that, as you heard, Donald Trump said that he would reassess uh, the current tariffs on steel and aluminum and hold off on further tariffs on other EU uh, goods. In exchange, the EU said that it would buy more soybeans and try to improve the facilities to receive liquefied natural gas uh, from the U.S. But the current tariffs uh, still hold the tariffs on steel, aluminum, as well as the as as well as the EU tariffs on different American products like bourbon and Harley Davidson. The biggest fear on the part of the EU is that the Donald Trump would actually uh, pursue uh, this uh, threat to increase the tariffs on EU cars from 3 to 25 percent. And that would have had a huge impact in Europe, much uh, higher than the impact of the steel and aluminum tariffs, because in Germany alone, 800,000 people depend on the car industry. So that's the thing with a global economy and this uh, trans uh, transatlantic trade between the U.S. and the EU, any change in, uh, in policy, any change in tariffs can have uh, ripple effects uh, in the other uh, side of the uh, Atlantic. And that's why uh, this week I went to the port of Antwerp, which is about 45 minutes away from Brussels, to speak with the people there to see how they feel about the current tariffs on steel. Take a look. The port of Antwerp is one of the largest ports in Europe. Millions of tons of cargo transit here each year, and the first trading partner is by far the United States. Half of all EU steel exports to the U.S. are shipped from these docks. But according to Wim Dillon, a port manager, these tariffs have had so far unexpected consequences. Quite surprisingly, perhaps, uh, we have exported more steel than in the, uh, in the first six months of this year than we did in the first six months of last year. Uh, but I think that has to do uh, a lot with uh, companies anticipating on what was going to come and uh, um, filling their stocks uh, in the US. But uh, if this would last for a long time, then I think uh, it will uh, become very negative indeed. Thousands of tons of steel coming from all over Europe are stored in the port of Antwerp, waiting for a ship to carry them to the US. According to port authorities, Antwerp has gained an expertise in handling high-end products, 
which makes it an ideal partner for American industries. So what you can see here is our uh, newest warehouse where uh, we are storing the, the coils going to US, Canada and Mexican market. Uh, we are, you know, at this terminal we are handling here about a million or over a million tons a year, uh, all for those destinations. This ship docks in Antwerp for four or five days, time for more than 100,000 tons of coil to be loaded. It will then set sail for the United States. It's a hard job, but dock workers are very often proud of their work even though their livelihoods depend on the upheavals of global trade. So on a daily basis they're working here uh, between 150 and 400 people directly handling the steel products to the US uh, and you know like uh, with all those kind of uh, import duties or you know hamperings like we, we might call it here locally uh, yeah that, that might affect those guys that might affect those people and those families. Antwerp stock workers are not the only ones closely observing the trade negotiations between the U.S. and the EU. According to a steel sector representative, 20,000 jobs across Europe directly depend on steel exports to the U.S. And the fact that the uh, current tariffs on steel and aluminum are maintained is seen by some in the EU as a failure. But when you see the uh, tone that was uh, heard here in the last few weeks and the escalating tensions between the U.S. and the EU, the declaration by Donald Trump and Jean-Claude Juncker is really a sharp departure from this. So you can expect a lot of discussions on trade in the coming weeks, in the coming months. Some here in Brussels are already talking about perhaps bringing back from the ashes the TTIP, the Transatlantic Trade and Investment partnership which was one of the uh, trade deals that was uh, negotiating during the uh, negotiated during the Obama years but that never came uh, to fruition but this if it happens will still take many years to negotiate and in the meantime you'll have many election cycles so things can of course always change